400,000. To me, the most deserving answer is access to a UP Manila education should be as far as possible be granted on the basis of some reasonable probability that the student, when he graduates, will place himself in some context that will contribute to the improvement of access and equity in health. The desirable UP Manila graduate will emerge when UP actively selects its entering students based on the most reliable signals for such graduates and then deliberately delivers its education to reinforce direct, uh, de uh, desired directions. The signals emanate from qualities that are partially enumerated in this slide. The admission process must capture the quality sought for. A more proactive admission committee must, using noble methods of selection, stands a better chance of finding the desired student. I will suggest a few of these. Number one is active scouting along the model of a sports club. A good hunting ground is the public school. Liaison can be established with pre-selected schools to serve as feeder schools. Number two, <clears throat> Regional Alumni Admissions Committee properly briefed and insulated from pressure doing the scouting. As an innovative screening and interview techniques, found use of innovative screen techniques and interview found successful by big business corporations, world-class universities, religious orders, military academies, lobby groups, cause-oriented advocacy organization, and others. Professional groups specializing in selection methodologies can be tapped for this purpose. <clears throat> Predetermined student mix, where a, student, when a proportion of students is given in a given class are admitted and deliberately channeled to a particular career path with full knowledge of the student and the faculty. <clears throat> Admission for service agreement that stipulates the responsibility and commitment of the student as requirements for admission. The College of Medicine is set to implement this in 2009. Admission via a social contract where the community selects the student for admission to the college in return for, in re, in return for certain commitment from the student. The community may assist in the financial and material support of the student while in school. This format already exists in the School of Health Sciences in Tacloban. Students admitted because they agree to serve in the community sectors targeted for reform must be nurtured in a very deliberate way. The nurturing process may include the following. <clears throat> Financial assistance in the form of free tuition and living allowance. Mentoring and their faculty members who are good models. Early exposure to leaders and programs in the forefront of health reform activities outside the university. Opportunities for postgraduate and graduate studies along the disciplines relevant to health of the public. Assistance for placement after graduation, especially to the Department of Health, non-governmental organization active in proactive health programs, especially special foreign assisted projects and university programs dealing with health social issues. Continuing tie with the university beyond graduation and placement. Having selected the desired fa desirable faculty and students, the academic program, the value added, must increase the probability of achieving the desired out outcome. From here on, I will be presenting examples of niches created by matching the five health sectors and UP Manila's resources, beginning with undergraduate program, dance, graduate and postgraduate training, research, networking, and finally, institu institution building. <clears throat> the needs may take the form of a specific reform or a mission. Either way, it is meant to be part of the total effort to improve access and equity in health. About the undergraduate program, in 1975, medical schools were criticized for preparing students for dimly perceived requirements of the 21st century while largely forgetting or even ignoring the, press, the pressing health needs of today and tomorrow. 
the criticism still valid today. Our health professions education in UP Manila still emphasizes specialized academic training which produce, produces a technical, technologically savvy graduate but who is ill-equipped to handle real-life problems. A quick glance at the undergraduate offerings of our health professions, colleges, and school bring out the stereotypical and pigeonhole character of the courses. The products of these programs are graduates prepared to practice their profession in the classical model of one-on-one, -on -one, profession clientele, contact, and a controlled environment. The health problems of the country need, the, need professionals whose education and outlook prepare them to work not only with individual patients, but with communities, both as caregivers and as transformative leaders. The undergraduate program must be fashioned so as to bring out in the students not only the desire, but also the ability to respond to the nation's health problems. Stanford University's response to, its, to this imperative is to develop multidisciplinary programs with cross-fertilization between and among disciplines with lots of social spaces for group brainstorming. Arizona State University College of Nursing is not about bedside care only, but, it's, but has architects, policy experts, business professors working together on healthcare innovations in the undergraduate program. We in UP Manila continue to graduate 72 nurses a year to be drowned in a sea of 100,000 nursing graduates. Where is our contribution? The following are, in my view, some of the desirable changes in the undergraduate program which will enable the university to produce a new type of professional I alluded to earlier. Number one, an enriched curriculum infused with more social so sciences interwoven in the teaching of biomedical technical subjects and further reinforced in dedicated hours of motivating. <coughs> technical lectures should be introduced by a brief discussion of the subject's social dimension. As a colleague puts it, teaching must be contextual rather than purely content-oriented. Values must be given ample space and the transitory nature of knowledge and technology must be emphasized. A flexible curriculum which enables students to differentiate early and follow their career path without being required to take the standard course for the degree. In their stead, those must subjects are replaced by other subjects that must be taken in other colleges to satisfy the competency requirements of the elected career. In such a case, an undergraduate program may have to be a multi-college offering. Number three, a dynamic undergraduate program that is able to shift to a new program as demanded by the health sector reform within the shortest possible time. Number four, <coughs> the undergraduate program should be able to create a new type of health professional. It may well be that the backbone of the basic health service nationally is not a physician, but a chimera emerging from an amalgam of health disciplines. Such a professional without, may, without intending to be, ineligible to be recruited to work outside the country because there is no way his academic status may be evaluated according to international norms. A successful model, mind you, is the expanded role of the midwife in the delivery of primary health care. You go to any area, part lung area, who is the doctor? It's the midwife. Who conceived of the idea? A UP graduate, a former secretary of health, except health secretary as Rin. Now, graduate education and postgraduate training in the service of equitable access to health care services. I'm almost winding up. Bear with me. Let me now move to the graduate program and postgraduate training. All academic units of UP Manila, with the exception of School of Health Sciences, have graduate courses. Postgraduate training takes place principally in the Philippine General Hospital. Referring to the reform framework grid, 
niches for graduate and postgraduate training can easily be identified in the health service sec uh, sectors. The PGH is arguably the best position UP Manila unit to contribute to reforms in basic health, basic health services, tertiary health, care, and human resource for health. PGH can provide the nation the model programs at the postgraduate level that address these health sectors including the prototype administrative structure that integrates the three. Some of, mo, some of the models developed by PGH, which may be replicated elsewhere, are the following. A linkage among primary, secondary, and tertiary health facilities in a given geopolitical region, the aim of which is to develop an efficient referral system. This has been tried successfully by PGH. The Chancellor is one of the architects of this in the 1970s and is now revived by the TATAC PGH Plus project that has to be replicated everywhere. A postgraduate training designed to provide highly trained specialists in areas needing one, as exemplified by the Bagong Specialistang Doctor para sa bayan. A postgraduate to a program to provide medical personnel to needy areas in exchange for scholarship to the would-be position which is the objective of the Bagong Doctor Para Sabayan. A scheme for professional and technical capabilities upgrade of tertiary government hospitals, especially retained Department of Health Hospitals. The PGH in tandem with the Postgraduate School of Medicine under the College of Medicine has ample experience of 10 years with this activity dating back in the 1970s and it has to be resurrected. The model of a collaborative program between a Department of Family and Community Medicine based in a tertiary care hospital, that is the PGH, with a community-based community health and development program under UP Manila to provide comprehensive health care in a community setting using the ALMAT approach, which is what is, uh, our program in San Juan Batangas is all about. Aside from the Philippine General Hospital, the Colleges of Public Health, Nursing, and Pharmacy, as well as the Department of Clinical Epidemiology, can find niches in the grid for their graduate program. I would like to see the College of Public Health devolve the undergraduate program, producing uh, medical tech, as well as some graduate programs that deal with clinical medical disciplines to other academic units, so that it can concentrate on graduate education in the area of health of the public and of the population. It should take primary responsibility on a continuing basis for the postgraduate training of the professionals of the staff of the Department of Health. The College of Nursing should, should move to being primarily a graduate college, utilizing its undergraduate program as feeder to its graduate activities. The nursing human resource needed in the health sectors, in the health sectors reforms will be varied and many and will most certainly be outside of mainstream nursing. The college must develop an academic graduate program to produce these new nurses. The College of Pharmacy should gear its graduate program to produce pharmacists needed to achieve sufficiency and security in pharmaceuticals. The Department of Clinical Epidemiology is a graduate department 